So that's because, yes, we will teach you how to use certain tools for certain locks with certain techniques. Yes, we'll do that. But really any administrative or academic intellectual course can teach that at a desk. What we teach you is how to do that within the framing of what if it's not working? What if you one of your tools breaks? You know, what if, you know, how, do you know how long this will take and how do you choose an entry method that might be better or faster? How do you choose which tool to adjust? You know, how do you figure out if your tension isn't working, how do you solve that problem? So we get you thinking about solving problems and thinking about adjusting variables and th always thinking about considering your end goal. Welcome to Uncensored Tactical, where our goal is to talk about training, tactics, and more without being limited by red tape or a sterile bureaucratic environment so that we can bring you value and insight in a way that other organizations just plain can't. All right, we are back. Well, good news, bad news. Bad news, the podcast releases have not been as frequent or as consistent as we like. We're very sorry about that. Uh, good news, it's because we're so busy doing so many new cool things that are really moving uh, the company forward. So we have lots of courses that we're teaching. We have lots of new books we're writing. Uh, we're stretching into some new areas. We're helping some other people write and publish some books because we have a, a passion for that craft as well. We have the dog training going on. Uh, we, we spent a lot of time and energy and effort on our two Fortress Canine dogs that we trained and uh, we sold one and we're waiting on the next one. So that will carry us right into our very short two pieces of housekeeping to get us moved into the show. Number one, I do run a franchise of Fortress Canine. I love the people, I love their methods, and I love their dogs. Uh, instantly fell in love the day that I uh, met Joel and heard him start talking about how he trains dogs and people. And the structure for how they train dogs and people was almost identical to the way that we view our training for tactical lock picking. So I instantly wanted to get involved. Um, as I got involved, I realized I had a knack for it, and I asked Joel if I could intern under him. And I did, and we moved forward, and now I have a franchise. So the first pe first housekeeping piece is that, and that we have one dog left for sale. She is a beautiful nine-month-old female Belgian male, and she is trained for obedience right now. And she is an absolute shoe-in candidate for bite work training, for protection. So get in touch with us if you want to see if Ginger, our little female Belgian male, you want to see if she's right for you. Uh, shoot me an email. We'll hop on a phone call. It's pat at U-T-A-C dot I-O. And you might hear her chewing on her bone uh, very politely back there in the background during this episode. Next piece of housekeeping. Our next upcoming course is with our good friends over at Cloaked Entry Co. And the course is here in central Georgia. It's May 4th and 5th. And that's our annual collaboration course that we do with Cloaked Entry Co. Um, we usually have done them for the last few years in North Carolina at the Protective Ops facility, and we love them, and we're very thankful to have them. Uh, but this year, because of me having access to this facility that I'm on now, we're going to do the collab course here in central Georgia. To sign up, you can go to utac.io. Just type those six letters in. That's utac.io. You can click on Courses, and that will bring you to our course page. And the course is already about halfway booked, so you do not want to miss this opportunity. We do not do this a lot. We do this once a year, and you're getting access to two companies that teach this really cool, unique skill set. And you're also getting two eight-hour days of training and two separate night operations, one each night on Saturday night and on Sunday night. So we look forward to it. We can't wait to see you there. Now we're in the show at just under three minutes. All right. I love it. So this is uh, another debrief podcast. I know we had um, our last episode was uh, another debrief. So hopefully there's still some things of value in this um, that you find, even if you're like, okay, I get it. Debrief, you're talking about the courses. So I am going to talk about how the course went, but that's going to be pretty short. And we're also going to leave some room open to uh, go down some rabbit trails here. So the last course we taught was at T's. That's T-E-E-S. And that's for energeticentrysystem.com. And they primarily teach explosive breaching, mechanical breaching, ballistic breaching, things like that. And they have a uh, government-only student base. Uh, they're located just outside of Memphis, Tennessee for one of their training facilities, but they also travel and they also have a number of other training facilities around the country. So they contract me to come out and teach my tactical lockpicking to their student base. 
and I've done that for them once or twice a year for the last, I don't know, maybe four or five years. I can't remember exactly. But they've always been very polite, very nice, very helpful to me. Um, and I think that I bring their student base a lot of value. We have just a ton of great feedback from students. Um, and that brings us to our first debrief or after action review for the last course I taught, which was the thing that stood out to me the most above everything else. And we're going to get into the topics that we teach and how a course flows. But I wanted to start with this, which was we had a student in the class who had attended um, just before my class had attended another lock picking type course somewhere else. And we don't have much by way of description for this course. We just really have a title and then a short list of the things you might learn. And the student said at the end of the two-day course, he walked up to me and shook my hand and he said, Pat, you know, I got to be honest with you. I had like a mediocre or even less than positive, like less than enthusiastic view of how this course was going to go. He's like, I was kind of here just to go through the motion. He's like, but as soon as we sat down and started doing the thing, I could tell this was different. And I, he's like, I really didn't know what to expect. And he's like, you blew it out of the water. This was a great course. I was pleasantly surprised. I learned a lot of really cool stuff. And I'm really thankful that I showed up. And I was like, oh, wow. Great. I love that. And also, comma, that's great data for me that reinforces the fact that most people in the tactical world don't know that this skill set exists I mean, everyone has seen the movie where the spy takes out the lockpick set, but they don't know that the skill of being good at picking a lock is a, is a skill that they can acquire. And if they do know that it's a thing, uh, a lot of people are misinformed or uninformed as to how, how easy it is to add into your toolbox and how useful it is in the world and how it's, you don't have to be a top tier level master spy in order to be really good at this. Um, and... Um, we also, I very much pride myself on teaching in a manner that is refreshing that this tactical world needs. That has been one of my goals since the very beginning is to change the way that the tactical world train trains. And we're going to talk a little bit about that next. But first, what are you going to get when you show up to one of our courses, particularly our courses at T's, um, but really any of our courses. We try to be pretty consistent across the board, no matter who we're teaching. So what, what are you going to get? Well, here's the topics. You're going to learn how to use a, a rake and a tension tool. That's two small metal tools, basically the size of a paperclip. And you're going to use those to get into a pin tumbler keyway. And a pin tumbler lock, if you don't know what that is, is basically the front door lock that you probably have on your front door. Um, and it's one of the most common types of locks out there. Um, it's on the front of most business doors. It's on the, probably on the front of your door. Excuse me. Uh, so you're going to learn about that. That's a raking technique. You're also going to learn some picking techniques. Raking and picking, these terms are kind of loosely defined. Uh, there's a lot of overlap. There's a lot of misnomers. So uh, don't get too hung up on the terms. But you're going to use some tools to get you into a keyway. We're also going to do that um, not just on a door lock, but on a padlock. So the same type of locking mechanisms exist in many padlocks and many door locks. And the same tools and techniques can be used on, on many of both. We're also going to teach you how to bypass padlocks and bypass door locks, meaning you're not interacting with the keyway. You're going over, under, around, or through the keyway, or you're going into the lock or the body or the door or the frame in a different direction so that you're avoiding the keyway altogether, or you're avoiding at least the standard opening method altogether. So bypasses are things like bypass drivers, where you stick it to the back of a padlock keyway and twist, and the whole lock pops open. Uh, things like quick stick bypasses where you stick another tool into the keyway but past the pins and you rock a lever on the inside of the lock. We have things like shackle shims where you take a little butterfly shaped um, thin metal shim tool and you slide it down where the shackle goes and the lock pops open. Uh, we have decoding, uh, sorry for doors, we have um, using a laminated sheet of paper or a commercial shim they call them to slide through the door frame to push the latch on a door to get the door to open, or we can use uh, hook tools or Slim Jim type tools to, to affect a latch, uh, like the latch that's connected to a doorknob. We're going to teach you how to walk deadbolts in and out of the door. Uh, we're going to teach you the underdoor option with an underdoor tool to pull down on a handle style um, doorknob. You're going to learn all of that. You're going to learn some decoding and some four digit code hacking. So you're going to learn how to physically decode a lock by feeling what the code is and then inputting that correct code. And then we're also going to teach you ways to think about four-digit codes so that you can apply that for things like 
uh, digital keypads and combination locks that have rolling wheels and push button combination locks and how to do a brute force code attack, which is basically trying every possible code and then ways that that's not just as simple as it seems, but there's an advanced application too. And of course we're going to, Hi, Ginger. She's very excited eating her bone. Um, we're going to teach you about what smart lock, smart key locks are. So this is uh, primarily quick set locks have a smart key lock and they're gaining in popularity incredibly rapidly. And they're becoming one of the most um, common locks out there for residential doors. And those operate very differently than a standard pin tumbler lock, which is what I start my courses off by teaching. So we do go over what a smart key lock is and how it's different than a pin tumbler lock. Pin tumbler lock. Ooh, I'm talking too fast. So uh, you're getting all of that. You're getting vehicle entry methods. So how to non-destructively enter through a vehicle that's locked. Uh, we also touch on a little bit in our standard two-day tactical lock picking foundations course. We will touch on uh, restraint escapes because they are locked obstacles that you might need yourself that you might find yourself needing to get through and to overcome those locked obstacles. And there's a lot of the same tools, techniques, and nomenclature and concepts within those, even though they're not a padlock or a door, they're on someone's wrists. Uh, but we do offer a, a full day course on vehicle entries and restraint escapes. Uh, so we just touch on that stuff just to let people know it exists and that those are locked obstacles and there are ways to defeat those without the keys. Uh, what else am I missing here? Arrow, what am I missing? You were at the course. Arrow always comes with me. She's my medical service dog from Fortress K9. Yes, yes, I know. You're doing a great job. So that is most of the things you're going to learn. And something that I have to mention here is that it is impossible for me to teach one of these two-day courses and to give my students every the, the skills to use every single tool and technique known for every lock. So there are always courses where I go, oh, I wish I would have covered that too. Uh, but that's a good thing. Um, and that's okay that I recognize that because another great thing about having done this for so long and being so in-depth studied and practiced at the craft of making entry and the craft of teaching, doing those for so long and, and having a passion for that and bringing that to my students. It's nice because we can flow through curriculum and we can skip blocks, we can rearrange blocks when it fits the class. So what do I mean by that? Well, I mean, following a curriculum bullet point by bullet point in and of itself is not a bad thing necessarily. Sometimes it's really good to have that chart of we must teach this and then teach this and then teach this so that we have taught all these things very clearly. Yes, that's fine. For me, I said in the beginning of this episode, um, the way that we teach this course is different than most tactical courses. It's because we are a little bit kind of quantum. We're a little bit yes and no. We're a little bit, you know, micro macro. So for example, uh, kind of like how DNA for somebody, um, you know, science people, they say that your DNA, one piece of DNA strand represents the whole of the human or the animal or whatever. And how one seed from an apple can create a whole apple tree of apples with more apples with more seeds. Well, the way that we teach our curriculum is kind of that way. There's a DNA in everything we do. So if all I had was one padlock and one pair of, you know, one lock pick set to teach you, I could still teach you the way we apply our craft, even just with one little limited in scope tool and lock and technique. So that's because yes, we will teach you how to use certain tools for certain locks with certain techniques. Yes, we'll do that. But really any administrative or academic intellectual course can teach that at a desk. What we teach you is how to do that within the framing of what if it's not working? What if you, one of your tools breaks, you know, what if, you know, how do you know how long this will take and how do you choose an entry method that might be better or faster? How do you choose which tool to adjust? You know, how do you figure out if your tension isn't working, how do you solve that problem? So we get you thinking about solving problems and thinking about adjusting variables and think, always thinking about considering your end goal and in tactical lock picking, which is its own curriculum that I have created in tactical lock picking, you still get to put a win in the column. If you're the tactical lock picker for your team and you're the entry specialist, you can still put a win in your lock picking column for your case studies. If you make entry into the house, 
by finding an open window somewhere. And that's something that academic courses, I don't think they can teach you that because they stick very strictly to a list and they're, they're not as they're very rarely focused on field application. Um, whereas I'm quite the opposite. So we can flow through curriculum too, because if a class has different skill levels or there's a different amount of students, it would be, I think, bad for me if I have the ability to adjust my curriculum, but I choose to rigidly stick to it. I think that'd be a bad thing to where if we have a smaller class of really fast moving operators that are picking things up. Yeah, that's great. I'm going to throw in extra tools, extra techniques, extra locks. And then if I see that, that a class is slowing down or they need a break or they're, they're enjoying playing with a particular tool and technique on a lock and then expanding upon that and changing variables and, you know, practicing the craft, then I will, I'll pump the brakes and I'll slow the class down. But every time we either speed up or slow down and every time we add or remove a block of instruction, that has a toll. And usually that toll is just time. And the course is a finite amount of time. So I want the ability in my courses at T's and elsewhere. And for my tactical lock picking foundations, two day course, and for other courses that we teach, I want the ability to give my class the things that they need. And sometimes that means pushing the gas. And sometimes that means pushing the brakes. So that's what you're going to get in a course from us. Uh, no matter who you are, what the, you know, no matter who the audience is, we bring our A game. Um, and a lot of our course design is based off of bad experiences that I've personally had and things that I want to avoid for my students. So uh, I've had instructors that are just not interested before, and that just kills me. I mean, especially for expensive courses and especially when I pay my own money to go. Um, so there's arrow drinking our water. This episode is going to be a little bit noisy. Sorry, folks, but just giving the dogs an off day because we got we had travel last week and we have travel coming up tomorrow. Um, where was I? Come on, brain. Uh, being fluid, being flexible. Curriculum. Well, we're just going to drive forward. Um, I like what we do. I have a passion for what we do. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, and I've had instructors show up and be just uninterested or just mopey or just not approachable. So, um, a way that we teach our courses, and this is a part of our curriculum really. And I know it's kind of, seems like it's nebulous and you can't really measure this, but it's real. Um, imagine going to a course with an instructor that's unapproachable, however you define or measure that. And imagine going to that same course with an instructor who's happy, excited, wants to answer questions, smiles, gives you eye contact, is happy that you're there. They love teaching their craft. Even if you're learning the same things, that's two totally different course experiences. And we very much pride ourselves. I mean, one of my, I showed up late to this class. That was, that was another mistake I made. Here's, here's the public debrief. I fucked up. Um, 17 minutes. I'll try and take that out. Keep these episodes a little cleaner. 17 minutes. F-bomb. Um, I screwed up and because of a timeline mix up on my end that I could have avoided, I thought I was showing up an hour and, and five minutes early. I was actually showing up 10 minutes late. So I showed up at 7.55 um, and the students were told to be there at 7.45. Um, so my mistake. Uh, good news is I walked right in and all 16 of our students, we had sold a, a course that was sold out and overbooked, which was great. I loved it. All 16 students were sitting in their seats and I went, uh, has anyone seen any staff members today or instructors okay well that's i'm the instructor uh sorry uh let's get started i gave like a 60 second brief and i said great well now that we did that pick up your tool pick up your locks let's go um, and that's another huge um, piece of appreciation that we receive for our feedback at the end of every single course which is i can't believe that we sat down and started class and the first thing we did was pick up our tools and locks and start learning so um, students love that. And I love providing that to them, which is we don't pull students away from the hands-on practice to give them a lecture block or an about me block. Um, and we do sometimes, I will sometimes share some war stories, um, but they are very specific to lock picking and they are often stories where I have failed, not stories about how great I am. Um, and they directly relate to the content. And what we do is we sp maybe spice those into the training a little bit. Um, but I, I am like abhorrent. Like I would hate 
to stand up in front of the class and say, okay, everyone stop what you're doing and listen to my story. That's 30 minutes long. Um, we don't do that. Um, and because I'm aware of that, I think it's much better, much more organic, and it makes for a better curriculum and a better course experience. If I save that stuff for, from the beginning, and then if and when it's appropriate, I spice it in throughout the course. Uh, so there's not a big about me block in the beginning. I, I barely give my resume anymore. Um, it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, a lot of people ask throughout the course, hey, uh, you didn't really talk about who you are or where you're from. And I'm like, oh, yeah, well, it's not a secret. I just, you know, I just show up and start teaching. But yes, I spent a decade working in military operations, law enforcement operations. Um, and the students go, oh, okay, yeah, seems like it. I go, okay, great. Um, so we're different. I mean, one, just one generation ago, call that what, 10, 20 years, you know, pick a number. Just one generation ago, it was training 1.0. You show up, you do your brief, you have a, I mean, it used to be what the flip charts and then it was, you know, PowerPoint stole the scene for the last 20 years. And you sit there and you listen to the overall brief and then each instructor's brief and then the safety brief and then the medical brief. Oh my God, kill me. Um, sometimes there's a place for that. And here's, here's something else too, to give some context to the weight for how I view different types of training In tactical lock picking, we can be a lot more easy in our courses. As students are getting up, walking around. I'm like, Hey, everyone walk over here. Look at this. Okay. Let's go to the next room. Let's have some of you guys go outside and try this thing outside. Come back when you're done. We can do that and be fluid because it's not a shooting course. So yeah, I get that a medical briefing for a shooting course is very important. Sure. I get that knowing which instructor is wearing which red shirt is important for a shooting course. Yes, I don't need that. The worst thing that can happen in one of my courses, if someone picks a lock wrong, is the lock doesn't open. Big deal. So we're able to breathe a little bit more and we take all of this into account because our main purpose is taking locked obstacle information and the thought processes and the decision-making matrix behind how do you make not just entry, but the most effective and efficient entry that's reasonable for your circumstances, meaning field application. How do we transfer our knowledge to you, the student, so that you can make really solid field entries the moment that you walk out of this class? So this is a short episode. We're at 21 minutes now. Um, hopefully it didn't sound too ranty, um, but I talk loud and fast when I'm excited about something. So I do have a passion for this craft. I'm very thankful to the people over at Tees. They've been very good to me over the years. Give me a chance to share my curriculum with a lot of great people. So we're thankful. We're looking forward to it. We'll be back at Tees in September. Um, they do, if you're unfamiliar and you're listening, and you're listening to this podcast, uh, Tees is the host for this, for this course. And I show up to teach the curriculum. And Tease does restrict their students to government only. So if you are in a government job and you're, if your agency is going to be, if your agency is going to foot the bill for your training, um, that might be the one that you want to go to. Uh, if you are not a government employee currently, uh, consider going to one of our open enrollment courses. In our tactical lockpicking foundations course, is the same exact curriculum no matter who I teach or where I go. It is just the understanding of locked obstacles. Uh, the only difference is between our public enrollment courses and our government courses is uh, the questions that we get from students and the way that we answer those. That's it. Uh, so I have no hidden information on this. Um, a lot of the police officers and military people will say, hey, if I'm doing this policey thingy and there's XYZ safety thing, what do I do with that? And I just answer it honestly. And we don't get a lot of those questions in our open enrollment courses. I mean, sometimes we do, but um, the actual curriculum is the exact same. So that's something that's important to me as well. All right, coming up on 23 minutes. Here's the outgoing brief. I'm going to do a short after show after this episode. We do usually do um, about an hour long show and then sometimes 30 minutes to an hour of after show on each episode. And the after show is not where we hide our best, most secret tactical learning content. Our after show is where we hide our worst content, where there's no script. We just kind of wing it. And it's usually me and my co-host, Dave. Um, sometimes another guest will show up. Uh, but our after show is kind of just us being us. And there are a little bit of nuggets of information there. Sometimes some early release information, a little bit more behind the scenes stuff. Uh, but if you want access to that, that's a huge help to us. If you just head over to patreon.com backslash UTAC, that's our Patreon page. 
And if you subscribe at anything above the $2 level, I think we have a five and a 10. Um, we also have a $35 level that's a course, but anything above the $2 level will get you access to our after shows. At that $35 level is access to our private Discord training group that we, we run over the Discord app. And we meet twice a month for live video training. Usually that is covert entry related or lock picking or bypassing or something similar. But sometimes we, we teach some other general tactical or practical skills. And occasionally we will have some guests in the industry come in and teach courses to our audience as well. It's great. It's a small group of people. Everyone's very friendly. Um, we have You have access to that app and to me 24-7. That doesn't mean I'll respond at 2 a.m. Um, but I do check that app every single day. And it's nice, it's quiet, it's polite. We don't talk politics, we don't talk religion. Um, people are very friendly. We send each other um, challenge locks and um, in our little tool giveaway area, we do some some exchanging of gifts and things like that. You get early access, you get some behind the scenes access. Uh, we do give quite a bit of feedback, uh, uh, not feedback, what's the word? Uh, we give back to our Discord community. So sometimes we'll do some t-shirt runs that are private um, and some we'll send out some prototype tools to the guys in the group. So if that's something for you, then the $35 a month level at patreon.com backslash UTAC might be a good fit for you. And again, we do have one per, one obedience trained dog for sale. You can email me at pat at UTAC.io to see how that dog can be a positive, um, oh God, it's either a positive asset in your life. It, man, it's life-changing. Going from having a couch dog as a kid to now having a full-time fully trained working dog and protection dog. Um, it's amazing having a dog that is obedient. Um, and arrow and I, we, we wax and wane a little bit throughout the year. Sometimes she's a little, you know, both of us are a little sharper. Sometimes we're a little bit more dull, but just having a dog that you can speak a very clear language to and expect some level of obedience, you know, higher obedience is better. Um, but man, that's just life changing. The way that my dog is not a liability that might break something, might jump in the wrong spot, might walk in front of me, you know, might dive under the lawnmower when it's running. Um, it's so much better to go, dog, this is what I need from you. And the dog goes, yep, I understand. And I will do it right now, man. That's so great. So Ginger is ready for that. We got the after show talked about, we got the dogs talked about our next course. Uh, please consider checking your calendar and reserving those dates and getting over to utac.io. That's our web address shortcut. And enrolling in our Cloaked Entry Co. UTAC collaboration course. It's coming up May 4th and 5th of this year, 2024. Thanks so much for checking us out, everybody. This was a short episode, and it'll be a short after show. We hope to see all of you guys on the next episode where we'll try and do something other than a course recap. Sorry. Uh, but we'll see the... Uh, the Excuse me. We will see the after show crowd in one second. Here we go.